Hi, I'm Damien, and this is the second video in the series of tutorials on this channel. So, before we start with what we have to talk about in this video, let's take a quick recap over what we talked about in the last part. So, in the beginning we talked about variables, and we, if you watched the first part, you already know that variables are things in which you can hold data. What kind of data? Well, you can hold whole numbers, you can hold floating point numbers, strings of text, and boolean variables, which can be either true or false. But not only can you hold these types of values, you can hold so much more types of values, so many more types of values. And we'll talk about it in a little while. After we talked about variables, we talked about the if statements. If statements are conditional statements that take a a logical operation and evaluate it and see if it is true or false and if it is true they execute the branch of the branch of code that uh, that corresponds to that uh, branch so for instance if x is greater than y this code will be executed the rest of the code will not be executed because x would not be equal to y and because the else state the else part uh, is irrelevant. In this case, if we run this program right now on the right here, we can see that we got the if branch printed as expected because x holds the value of 10 and y holds the value of 5.2. If, if we would replace y with 10, we would get elif branch, the, this branch right here. That's because x is now equal to y. And we, if we would replace it with 20, we would get the else branch, as expected. So keep in mind that whenever you use an if statement, every time uh, the code that, that is getting executed is the code on the branch that holds the value of true in the conditional uh, statement in the bool in it that is evaluated as being true. Moving on, we have the for loop, the for statement. So the for loop iterates over a certain range of numbers or over a collection of elements, of objects, of anything really. And it and for each iteration over that collection, it takes an iterator, in this case I call it i, this is why we usually use i because it stands for iterator and it takes the value for each loop and assigns it to the iterator i. So in each loop of the for statement you can use i as the value that is given by uh, the for loop for each iteration. So for instance uh, in this loop right here what we do is we take each number from 0 all the way up to 10 because we don't take 11 we always take the one with that's less with 1 than the number written here in this case 10 so we take all the numbers from 0 all the way up to 10 and we print them with a space between them uh, it doesn't matter what this part does don't worry about it but we take each number and we print them and if you look right here on the right you can see that we take that we have the expected result. Everything's fine. So we have 0 all the way to up to 10, to 10 because in each iteration of this loop we print the value of i that is given by this range instruction. So that's what we talked about in the first part. We also did some programs but if you uh, haven't watched it you can go ahead and take everything from scratch. Now let's talk about our today's business. So, math operators. Because we're writing computer code, we will always have to write some math. We will always have to do to deal with math. It it uh, it will happen sooner or later. And because of that, we have some math operators. So, let's say we have let's take some variables to which we will assign the value of the result of operations of some math operations between two other variables. What, let me let me demonstrate. So let's take the variables x as 10 and y as uh, I don't know 17, and let's take a as being the sum of x and y, b as x minus y, c as x times i. The star, the asterisk is the multiplication sign and this is of course the minus and plus. 
d will be x divided by i and keep in mind that whenever you divide two numbers this is a floating point operation so if you divide 10 by 17 you will always get something that is less than 1 because it will be 0 point something we'll see in a, in a little bit let's take e as the x percentage sign y the percentage sign is called the modulo operator or the short version mod so if we want to read this operation it would be x mod y that's this is how I read it at least so we have these operators and the last one will be x raised to the power and I will not be raising it to the power of y because we, we will we would get one followed by uh, 17 zeros I will just raise it to the third power so what do we expect to get from all of this we expect to get first in a we ha we'll have 10 plus 17 will be 27 we have 10 minus 17 will be minus 7 10 times 17 170 x divided by y will be 0 point something we'll see in a little bit and x mod y will be the remainder I, I forgot to mention that sorry so x mod y will be the remainder of dividing x to y but not as a floating point operation but as an integer operation you'll see in a, bit, in a little bit and we are expecting the value of e of x mod y to be 10 because if you, if you divide 10 divided by 17 as a whole um, operation you will get 0 and with the remainder of 10 um, and in f we expect to get x raised to the third power which would be 1000 we can run this program and nothing happens because we didn't print them sorry sorry about that uh, so we can print all of the numbers one second and if we run them as expected 27 minus 7 170 this re right here this big number right here actually it's a little number but it's really long because it has a lot of digits uh, so this is the result of dividing x to by y because it's a floating point operation remember 10 as expected is the result of x mod y and 1000 is x 10 raised to the third power so that's about it with the math operators these are the basic operators and uh, for now these are the only ones that we will be using let's move on as I said in variables you can hold data but you can't you can hold not only numbers you can hold a collection of numbers a collection of numbers can be a list the, a list that's what they're called so a list can look like this or it can also look like uh, this or it can also look like um, this if you pay uh, if you have any experience with some previous some pr if you have any previous experience with programming and if you worked in other programming languages like C++ you would be knowing that in those kind of languages you cannot hold multiple types of data in uh, the same list you can't have an integer number and John in the same list you can't have a boolean operator and two and John in the same list in Python you can do that keep that in mind so we have this we have a list in in uh, the variable X we have a list this one right here but what can we do with it well first we can try printing it just print the whole list and we get as expected the entire list printed right here let me clear that up so we have the list but what if we wanted to get only the first element well Python is a zero indexed language what does this mean it means that when you start counting the numbers the order of the numbers although this is the first element in the list although 2 is the first element in the list it is on the position number 0 3 is the second element in the list but is on the position number 2 and so on so if you want the, the first element you would write x of 0 we use the brackets 
this right angle brackets to access to access every single every single element in the list. So you would have x of z of the on the zeroth position to get that number. And as you can see, we got we got that exact number. Now, Python is has a lot of tricks, a lot of really cool things that you can do with it. So, what if we wanted to print really fast with no problems? We what if we wanted to print the first three uh, elements of the of the list of x? Well, we could do this and print them in order two, three, and four because they are on these positions, and we and this would work perfectly. But because we are working with Python and be because Python has a lot of tricks, Python has some list operations that you can do. So by using the operator, the colon operator, you can access multiple elements at the same time. You can get a sub list of a list, a sub array. You can also call a uh, list, you, it, it can be also called an array. So let's say we wanted to get the first three elements, we would uh, write it x, right angle brackets, colon, three. Just as we did with the for statement, we don't take the last the last position. So instead of taking, so we will be taking all of the elements from zero all the way up to two because we exclude the third, uh, the position three. We can run this again and we get, as expected, we get a sub array. If you look closely, closely at this last output you can see that first in the uh, in this row that I highlighted right over here it, that row corresponds to this line over here the eighth code line because of the way we printed this we didn't print a sub array a sub list of the initial list we printed three individual numbers one after the other because we, in the tenth row because we printed it like this we got back as an entire list. So keep that in mind and remember that because it will be useful. But what if what if we wanted to add a number to that to that list? What if we don't we would like to expand the list to add some other numbers to it? Well we can we can do this with the append function. So each list has the function append that can be called for that list. So we would have x dot append and we can just uh, we can just enter whatever number we want to append. Let's say we wanted to append ten, and we print x. And as expected, we get the initial array, the initial list, with the number ten appended to it at the end. Every time you append a number, remember this. Every time you append a number, you always append it to the end of a list. Okay, so now that we got that covered, let's go through the list. Let's say we want to print all of the numbers in the list, in the modified list, after we appended a number to it. We want to print all of the numbers, one below the other. So we would have something like 2, and then 3, and then 4, and 2, and 1, and 10. So we want this to be the output. How can we do this? Well, we can do this by writing a for loop because we want to iterate over every single element in the array so we could say for i in range 0 all the way up to well we we, we first have five elements right here then we add a sixth element here so we have six elements in total but keep in mind because we have six elements in total all of the numbers that you can see right here will have the positions 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 so all the way up to 5 so if we want in our for loop to go from 0 to 5 including 5 we will go in, we will go in the range instruction from 0 to 6 so for i in range to 0 to 6 we will be printing print x of i and if we are, if we run this, we get as we wanted the expected output. But what if I told you that there is an easier way? As I said earlier, the for loop iterates over the elements in a collection of other elements. Uh, of uh, I'm sorry, it iterates over the elements in a collection of elements. So in this case the for loop iterates over the numbers from 0 to 5 including 5 
but we can also go say for i in x because x is a list is a collection of elements so we can say for i in x print i and if we run it again and let me let me just delete this or actually i will be commenting it so if we run this right now we get the exact same result because we just did it a bit faster a bit easier so with the for loop over here we just iterated and we went through each single um, element in x and instead of going through each number from 0 to 5 and then accessing at each element at the at every single position in x we actually went through every single element straight through the elements okay so we got that covered we know so so far we learned some math operators we learned how lists work we learned how to access every element in a list we also learned how to print multiple elements but what else can we do with it well let me now that I'm thinking of it let me give you a little bit of uh, a more detailed uh, explanation about this line right here not only can you print all of the elements from 0 to 3 because it is a zero index uh, I just remember this and the, as I said in the first video all of these will be uncut so everything will be uncut so you can experience uh, the whole process of thinking of a program and then going back and fixing problems because no n you will never get a program right at the f on the first time you will never do that and it's it is okay to make mistakes it is perfectly fine so this is why these videos will be completely uncut and unedited everything will be just raw improvisation so in this line right here we printed this sub list of the initial list x but this this only printed our the first three elements but what if we didn't want to print the first three elements but we wanted to print the elements from the third position which would be from the index of 2 all the way up to the last position so would be it would be the index of 5 well first what we ha we can use the colon operator like this we want to start from the index of 2 that means we will start from 2 and then we will use the colon operator and and then enter the last uh, the last index which it will be 5 but as i said earlier we can go with 5 because if we go with 5 we will be getting uh oh actually actually uh, i'm sorry now see that this is what i mean by making mistakes we can go with 5 <laughs> now this is funny okay so um, X is an is a list with five elements it may so that means that the number one right here has the index of four meaning that we can go all the way up to four so it will be index two three and four so printing it like this would be just fine and we can check it out and we can see that we got the, exactly what we wanted so yeah as I said we you can always make mistakes it's perfectly natural now, uh, what I also wanted to talk about in this video is, um, is make, I wanted to make a program, a simple program where we go through the elements in a list and we double all of the elements. If you think you've got it, if you think you know how to make it, just pause the video right here, solve the problem. So let me, let me write up some uh, the problem. So we have a list with some numbers from 1 through 10 and we want a program that will take the list x and it will turn it into a second list x2 that will have the double of those numbers. So we will be having 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 and 20. So we want to go from x to x2 by writing a program. Okay, so uh, if anybody uh, paused the uh, paused the video, I hope they they were done, and we can move on with the solution. So we have x. 
we want to go through each element in X and we want a new list X2 where we will be uh, storing the result as, as just as we want it right here well to declare an empty list we can just say uh, you, you, we can just create a variable in our case it, it will be called X2 and we assign it the value of an empty array an empty list just open and close the brackets and that's about it that's the closed list and now let's solve the problem <coughs> so we need to go through each element but we need it to work even if we change the size of the array and here is a little bonus tip when you want to find the length of a list you can use the function len that stands for length of course so len of x it will return us it will return the, va the length the number of elements in x in our case there will be 10 elements so we can store this value in another variable called n okay so now we want to go through the list we can again we can use a for loop and do for i in range 0 all the way up to n because since we're since there are 10 elements we will be going to from 0 all the way up to 10 which will be which will work just fine because again again uh, Python is a zero indexed language so we will be starting with the zero index and we will be ending with the ninth index index 9 so as I said we want we want to go through all of the elements and let's do that we can just say X and we want for each element that we are uh, iterating over we want to append the value of doubling that element to x2 so how do we do that well as I said earlier we can get x2 and append to it the value of x of i the value of the element at the index i and times 2 so that's about it if we print now x2 and we also print x let me clean this up okay we will get exactly as we wanted we will get the double the, an array with the doubles of all of the numbers in the initial array but let's take it a step further further let's instead of creating only one list only x2 let's also create x3 which will and in x3 we will store the exact same array but we will get it in a different way just as we did earlier let's take each element in the x array and double it so let's say for i in x in this case x3 dot append i times 2 and if we print it x3 right here and print we print the result we get the exact same thing again this is correct so that would be the most the simplest ways in which you can iterate over the elements of an array of a list and do something with each element but we can do s it we can make it even simpler we can make it even shorter because we solved it in two lines of code we doubled the array in only two lines of code what what if i told you that we can do it even easier in an even easier way by taking a third a third array x4 and we will do it like this instead of declaring it right here let's delete it and let's just say x4 is equal to 2 times i for i in x this right here this line right here is called a list operation so what we are doing in right here is we are creating a list and for each element i in the list x each element that will that will be stored in the array will be 2 times i so we will be getting the exact same op, uh, array as we got for x2 and if we print it if we reprint x4 we will get the exact same result this is a little bit of a, a, a trick, a small trick, and you don't have to bother with it, but if you understand it, it's perfectly fine. 
Okay, so now that we've got this covered, let's do one more problem for, for the end of the video. What if we would want to store all of... We, what if we want to enter a number from the keyboard, take that number and then store in a separate list all of the prime numbers from 1 all the way to that number. So take a number a number x store in an in a list all of the prime numbers from 1 to x so let's do just that x will be equal as we did in the first part int of input Th so now we have the value of x we uh, we solve the problem of actually getting the value of x from the user, from the input. And if you want, you can check it by printing x, of course, 2. So we, we entered 2 and we get 2 right back. That's fine. That works fine. Okay, now we want to go through each number from 1 to x. So how do we do that? Well, remember that 1 and that 1 is not a prime number. The definition of a prime number is a number that has at li that has exactly two uh, numbers that divide it, 1 and itself. And 1 does not have two numbers that divide it because it's 1. It can only be divided perfectly by 1. So can divide it. Keep that in mind. So what do we want? We want to take all the numbers from 1 all the way up to x, but because 1 is not a prime number, we can skip it and go and start from the number 2. But of course 2 is also a prime number and 3 is also a prime number, and we can work with that. We can test our program with 2 and 3. So we want to iterate through all of the numbers from 1 to x. To x. Let's do it. For i in range 1 all the way and because 1 is not a prime number, we, we can start from 2, starting from 2, all the way up to x, but we want to also check if x is a prime number. So we will be taking x plus 1. So for each number, what do we do? First, we check if that number is a, is a prime number. How can we do that? Well, first we can assume, we can assume, let, let's take a, a value called assume, assumption actually we can assume that uh, yeah I know it's uh, it's a bit of a stupid name for an uh, for a variable but let's just deal with it so we can make an assumption that the number is automatically t true and we must not prove that it is a prime number we must prove that it is not a prime number how do you do this well we take all of the numbers from and we will be using a, a second uh, variable in this inner for loop. So this for loop right here, with this is nest. This for loop right here is for, is nested inside of this for loop. So these are called the nested for loops. If you have an if inside of another if statement, those are called nested if statements. Uh, so let's let's continue. So for j in range and Again, we will be uh, we we will be checking with two. We will start checking with two. Um, and let's see. So now that, now that I'm thinking of it, we can make it a bit more efficient by instead of starting from uh, from two, we can start from four to directly from four. Uh, and I'll tell you why in a second. We can first check if x is greater, uh, is equal to 1, then we don't do anything. So because we don't want to do anything, we just pass, we don't do anything. And not only do we, do we pass, we actually exit the program by using the exit function. Else, elif, if the number x is equal to 2, we just print 2, and then we exit. If it is equal to, tr to 3, we'll print 2 and then 3. 
and then exit L and else pass so what does this mean well we will be starting the program by inserting by entering a number from the console right here we will be checking if if x if the number we entered is equal to 1 if it is we just exit because there are no prime numbers from w all the way up to 9 to 1 from 1 to 1 there are no prime numbers if x is equal to 2 we will just print 2 if x is equal to 3 we will just print 2 and 3 and then and then we can start checking the, the numbers from 3 onward so in this case we will check all of the numbers from 4 all the way up to x plus 1 we will assume that the number is prime and we will take all of the numbers that can divide that number except except for one and itself so if there so how do you do this by taking by starting from the number 2 and all the way up to i because in this for loop the outer for loop the number that we are iterating over is is held in the variable i so because it's held in the variable i we are basically checking if the number i is a prime number or not so how do so as i said we will be taking all of the numbers starting from 2 all the way to i minus 1 including i minus 1 and we will check if i can be divided perfectly by that number and that number will be held in the variable j so we will do this if i mod j is equal to is equal to 0 again that means that the remainder of dividing i to j is equal to 0 meaning that j divides i we will say that the assumption was wrong so we will say that the assumption was false and we will exit this loop because this loop uh, doesn't need to go any further for example let's take 4 the number actually let's not take now 4 let's take the number 6 so 6 can be divided perfectly by 3 in this inner loop when we will be check checking if 6 is a prime number we will take first we will take 2 and we will see that uh, that 2 is can also divide perfectly uh, 6 in uh, is also uh, can also divide 6 perfectly so uh, 6 mod 2 is also 0 so what will happen in a, in the inner loop is that we will be checking if 6 mod 2 because we will be starting with 2 is equal to 0 which will be true and because it has another uh, it can be divided by another number other than itself and 1 it will not be a prime number and we can just say that the assumption was false and the break instruction this is another uh, tip and I hope you will remember this the break instruction is a is an instruction that can only be used in loops and what it does it it just exit the current loop so it will exit the inner loop right here but will uh, not exit this outer loop so if it is if i mod j is equal to 0 the assumption was false and we exit the loop otherwise we will be continuing the loop all the way up to i minus 1 and after the for the for loop the inner for loop was done was completed uh, what we have to do is check if the assumption that we made earlier right here has remained true because if the assumption has remained true then we have not found any number from 2 all the way up to i minus 1 that can divide i that means that i is a prime number so if the assumption is true now uh, if the assumption is true we just print that number i print i and with a space between between it between this i and the following one so uh, a little uh, a little observation right here S this this operation right here I is a bit irrelevant because assumption the va the variable assumption holds a boolean variable inside of it meaning that 
it is irrelevant to check if that uh, if the value inside of the variable is equal to another boolean variable we can just write this in a shorter way because if this is evaluated to being true we will run this code if not if it's not evaluated to true so if assumption is false nothing will be run so that's about it now we can try it we can try the, pr the program with 10 and because we tried it with 10 we got 5 and 7 of course we also needed to get <laughs> 2 and 3 and as I said earlier we all made mistakes and making mistakes is perfectly fine let's see how we can fix them so 2 3 5 and 7 these are the uh, prime numbers that are uh, that uh, start from 1 and end to 10 but we also need to make sure that we always print uh, 2 and 3 so instead of checking if it is uh, less um, oh yeah it's pretty easy so on the else branch right here we just print 2 and 3 now if we do it again we will be getting a little bit of a okay okay now that that's um, that looks better a lot better um, so this is the correct output that we wanted but we can check if what if we use 11 11 is also a prime number we want to see 2 3 5 7 and 11 Let's check if it if 11 shows and it shows. So that's that was that now it works perfectly fine and we uh, displayed all of the numbers from 1 to n or to x to whichever number we enter in the console. So that's how you write a program that checks every number from 1 to x if it is prime. Uh, that's about it for this video. Uh, I hope you understood it. I hope it was clear enough uh, And I will see you in the next video. Have a nice day